in this section we are going to talk about AAA which is a security feature that provides secure access to network resources. Let's start with what is AAA. We have three main features of AAA. The first one is authentication. Authentication provides users must enter username and password before accessing the devices. And authorization provides users must be authorized at various levels. For example, you may have operator users and you may, you may have administrator level users. So you can define different command line interface commands for the operator and administrator level. And accounting provides configuration changes in user access should be recorded. Let's talk about the benefits of the AAA then. We have four different benefits of AAA and the first one is flexibility in command line access. Command or interface based authorization can be made by AAA for the access to the command line interface. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is scalability. Managing a large number of users on a large number of devices is very difficult as the network grows. With AAA you can handle it easily. The third benefit is standard authentication methods. AAA supports Radius protocol which is an industry standard so a standard authentication method can be created even for different vendor devices. And the last benefit is multiple backup systems. When configuring authentication options, multiple servers can be specified and these servers can be combined into a single group. Let's talk about some Radius and TACAX Plus. Radius and TACAX Plus are both AAA protocols. For example, the terminal user sends an access request to the network device and the network access device exchanges this request with the AAA servers by exchanging the Radius or TACAX message as you can see in the figure. If the authorization succeeds, the user can provide access to the device, otherwise it cannot. Here is some differences of the Radius and TACAX. Radius uses UDP while TACAX Plus is using TCP. Radius encrypts only the passwords while TACAX encrypts the full payload of each packet. And as I told you before, Radius is an open standard and TACAX is a Cisco proprietary. Let's see how we can verify identity with TACAX then. The first message going from the client to server is the start message. TACAX server gets the start message and sends a get user message back to client and demands the username. TACAX client sends the continue message and sends the username parameter to TACAX server. Then TACAX demands the get pass message and sends the password request to client. Client replies back with the continue packet and sends the password inside this packet as you can see. And with the final status TACAX sends an accept or a reject message. Here is how we can configure the AAA. We have four main steps of the configuration. In the first step AAA is enabled globally by using AAA new model command. In the second TACAC server IP addresses and shared secrets to be used in communication with servers are determined. As you can see that the command is TACAX server host and the IP address of the TACAX server and key command with the 
shared key that we are going to use. In the third step, we have AAA authentication login command first, which identifies the information to be used for login. The default word represents the list name. The remaining comments are authentication methods. Group TACAX plus, as you can see in here, comes in the sense of using all configured TACAX plus servers. And we have local keyword in here, as you can see, and local defines the second authentication mechanism. If authentication servers cannot be accessed, local usernames and passwords defined in the router local can be used. And the fourth step is the default list for console and remote access is applied to the relevant lines as you can see. The configuration is like this. You get under the line by using line console zero to reach the console port and line VTY 015 by reaching to the telnet or remote access ports and the command is login authentication and the name of our list.